Hi, I'm Mike Levine with Audio Fanzine, and in this video, I'll be looking at how to use the Apple Loops feature in Logic Pro X and in GarageBand. Both programs come with a large collection of royalty-free Apple Loops. Apple Loops are a very convenient way to add a huge range of instrument sounds and sound effects to your projects. So first, click on the little loop icon on the upper right to bring up the loop browser. You have two different ways to search for loops, via keywords or categories. Let's start with the keywords view. The first two rows are instrument types and the second two are descriptive keywords. So for example, I could choose drums and then acoustic and grooving in the second column and I could choose something in the third column if I wanted to. The list below shows me the loops that meet that criteria. Let me look down here and let's say I wanna use the 80s pop beat. I select it and it plays automatically so I can audition it, make sure it's what I'm looking for. And you'll see several items next to it in the list. Beats shows how long the loop is. The heart column is for selecting a loop as a favorite. When you do that, it shows up under the favorites category up here. In Logic, you'll see two other columns, tempo and key. Now you don't see key here because these are drum loops, but um, if I were in, say, synths, there's the original key and the original tempo. Why this is important is because on an audio loop, that gives you a sort of a baseline so that you know how far from the original you're changing the pitch or the tempo. If you get too far, it's gonna sound unnatural. Unfortunately, the original key and tempo information don't show up in GarageBand. So let me go back to the drums now. And we had acoustic and grooving. Okay, so for the best results, try to find loops that are close to your song's tempo and key. Another thing to pay attention to is when you drag the first loop into the timeline in your project, if it's an audio loop, that is, it's going to ask you, do you want to import the tempo from that loop? And if you do, then it's going to change your project tempo to the tempo of the loop. And if you don't, it will time stretch the loop to match your project's tempo. Okay, now loops are color-coded, green loops are MIDI loops, and if you drag them into an empty spot in the tracks area, they'll automatically open as a MIDI track with the correct instrument. However, if you drag a MIDI loop into an audio track, it'll automatically be converted to an audio loop using that same instrument. So notice that it's now turned blue. You can't do it the other way around though. You cannot drag an audio loop into a MIDI track and have it turn into MIDI. It doesn't work that way. So. In GarageBand, uh, sound effects tracks have even a third color code. There's sort of a brownish orange. In Logic, though, um, they keep the sound effects colored blue just like other audio tracks. If I wanted to then choose another instrument in this keywords view, I would need to hit the reset button first. By the way, I can also use the search field and type in a search term if I wanted to. Here's a cool thing, you can audition a loop from the browser while another is playing in the tracks window or anything's playing in the tracks window and it'll play in time. So that's a good way to figure out if a loop's gonna work with something. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this drum loop into an audio track. I can extend it by placing the cursor on the upper end of the loop, and then you just click and drag, and you can extend it, or shorten it, or whatever you wanna do. Check this out, if I click on this arrow here, I'll see all the other loops in this particular loop family, just in that little menu there, and I can easily switch from one to the other if I wanted to. This is really helpful, uh, especially when you're putting together drum parts, and you have to have variations, a lot of variations, and find the fills, and so forth. And it only shows you what are in that particular loop family, so. If it's a, a loop that's only a single loop and there's no other loops related to it, then it's not going to show anything. Okay, so now I'm going to add a bass track. This time I'm going to use the category view. So I'll go to instruments, bass, and grooving. Okay, so this looks cool. Let me audition it, see what it sounds like with the drum loop. And even though this is a green MIDI loop, I'll drag it into an audio track and it'll turn into an audio loop. And I'll extend it to the length of the drum loop to make them both play the same amount of time. Let's say I wanted to have the loop change chords during the song or put another loop in representing a different chord in the song. 
I would use the transposition track. And you can find that both in Logic and in GarageBand. In Logic, you find it by going tracks, global tracks, show transposition track. In GarageBand, just go track, show transposition track. And there's key commands for both of those. Okay, so the transposition track lets Logic or GarageBand know when to transpose an instrument loop. It's not going to affect the drums or percussion loops. Um, so that way you can change chords within a song using the same loop. Of course, again, you have to be careful not to go too far with the transposition or it's going to sound strange. Let's say I wanted my bass to go to the four chord here. I could click on the transposition track, create a breakpoint, and then drag it up five semitones, which is moving it up uh, a fourth. So now it sounds like this. So you could create a whole song like that or just use loops as part of your arrangement. Most likely you'd use the loops in conjunction with regular audio tracks like vocals and guitars that you record, but it's totally up to you. One last point, I can make an Apple loop from any audio region. I simply select a region and then go to File Export Region to Loop Library in Logic or File Add Region to Loop Library in GarageBand. Pretty cool. And then you can come back and find that in your loop library and use it later on. So that's a little bit about using Apple Loops. And thanks for watching. This is Mike Levine for Audio Fanzine.